the show for Sun Leo. Something's really wrong with you. Infection rate is thousand. Don't know what. Singapore is such a a country where it's built on greed, isn't it? Do you all know that Doraemon was me? <laughs> Welcome to the Daily Catch Up. This yeah. is Doraemon. Wow. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs>。ว่าแต่กี่ประเทศนี้มีสิงคโปร์บอยเฮียวิบัสเยสเดซวอนฮิสอะเฟคชั่นเนอะเนอะเนอะเนอะเนอะเนอะเนอะเนอะเนอะเ
Then what? What bar you call it? I don't it? know, like a go go bar. Go go bar. Clean version. Mm. Wow, you're clean. Nah. No, it's not clean. <laughs> it's like a go go bar. No, we digress. No, but we got it when he said it. Yeah. <laughs> no, but maybe it's not. If not, he wouldn't say it like that. Okay. <laughs> but I guess well, it anyway, is. Anyway, <laughs> so I just say my year spawned a lot of interesting personalities. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, that, that, that was that was where I came from. Mm. And a lot, of, um, a lot of us, I think maybe growing up in that era, um, had to deal with a lot of changes in Singapore very quickly. Suddenly, mm. you know, the, the curriculum changed after my year. So my year in history, called your history lesson, what you all learned last time? Singapore uh, history, right? Yeah. Singapore, Japanese Singapore, right? Uh, all occupation. Singapore history, right? Uh, yeah. I didn't. We learned oh. real history. <laughs> 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 we learned ancient history. We didn't learn about what your textbooks teach you about. Right. So that's why we, we, we wanted to talk about things that, what is real? What and was what something that they've removed from textbooks? I don't know. I never started your history. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no. okay, okay, okay. Do you know what I mean? So I, speaking of studying, yeah. something that people don't really know is that you actually studied electronic engineering <laughs> yeah. in what is currently can, known as Nanyang Poly. I can fix this, you know. So you are yeah. alumni. You are alumni at who? You. Nanyang huh? Poly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, but don't the, say lah, don't say <laughs> <laughs> back then, back then uh, it was interesting because Singapore was growing as a, as a it was known as an electronics hub, yeah. manufacturing, robotics, blah, blah, yeah. blah. So a lot of these three governments put money in to invest. So German, Singapore Institute was doing mm. mechanical engineering. The JSTI, Japan Singapore Institute was doing, uh, I think uh, robotics and I don't know what, like Japanese things to do. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, build walkman. Uh, <laughs> and then um, the French Singapore Institute, put in a lot of money to do electronics because we were being semiconductors, right. uh, computer engineering, writing programs and stuff like that. But they picked the best one. Yeah, and then I, I, because I failed Chinese in school four times, so they kicked me out because I couldn't go to university. Then my hopes were dashed of becoming, you know, you got ambitions, right? When you're yeah. young. So, I mean, what was yours when you were younger? Uh, my mother said doctor. I uh, see, uh, yours? <laughs> Zookeeper. No one like, really? That's your ambition? Yeah. yeah. That's great. How about oh, you? Lawyer at one point, I guess. Oh, uh, you're yeah. a baker. Uh, yeah. And yours, you? Bus driver. Bus driver. So, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, what is it? Don't bluff up. Because- It's big, ma. Fun, ma. Yeah, it's fun, right? No, but so I know real. people want to be a train driver yeah, because yeah, it's yeah. fun. So I want, I had four ambitions. I wanted to be either a lawyer okay. um, or teacher or a journalist. Okay. Also tired one. Yeah, you know, because you know, but I, I really, I really love, I love to teach. Um, and then that dash, all my hopes got kicked out of JC too in the middle of JC mm. because failed four times. So my dad said, go back and do a trade. Lah. Otherwise, you know, you gonna wash toilet yeah. or whatever the usual. So applied law, then go EDB, got bursary. So they paid me to study. So mm. I applied to French Singapore Institute and French was one of the languages we had to learn because all the manuals were in French. Mm. So I had to, you know, fix <laughs> computer all in French. So end up your French better than your Chinese. Of course. Of course. <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> of course. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm not, 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 not this, uh, counting my Chinese heritage, but at the end of the day, when people ask me who I am and where I'm from, I say I'm Singaporean. Yeah. I never say I'm Chinese. Yeah. Uh-huh. I mean, I'm no, not- true. Uh, Chinese yeah. is a difficult language. It is a difficult, completely understand. I mean, no, so <laughs> French was easy for me because it was interesting oh. that it because first of all, I could read it. Alphabets, yeah. Uh, yeah, Roman. You could Roman. guess it. Yeah. And it's Latin based language. You know, the root words are all the same as English. And once I have French hack, hashtag French hack. Whoever learned French, come to me. I teach you. I got formula all. Ah. Mm. Mm. Well, but the pronunciation is so hard. Like, I think um, I read somewhere that you were given a, a title and it's also in your bio, in like you your mean social the media. Order of the arts How and do letters? you pronounce it? Yeah, I tried. I don't even know where to begin. The chandelier or something. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> hey, I want to swing. <laughs> so, <laughs> no. <laughs> so it's Chevalier de l'Ordre des Arts et des Lettres. God damn. Got the flame man. Got the flame man. <laughs> yeah. Chevalier means knight, the knighthood. So it's basically a French datot lah. Oh. So oh. <laughs> Chevalier. Wow, that's such a bastardization of it. <laughs> <laughs> but a great description. Yeah. To <laughs> and then and, and people, of course, my friends all came to the ceremony. Like, hey, what's a uh, Chevalier? Uh, you only can valet <laughs> French cars, is it? <laughs> I said, uh, <laughs> yeah, sit home. <laughs> and I said, yeah. No, anyway, so it, it was great. And, and I really, I'm really grateful to the French government because um, I never expected it. I never asked for it. You know, you don't apply. Unlike mm. Singapore, you want anything, you must apply. Mm. Um, <laughs> I believed in merging and building bridges between cultures. And when I studied a little bit in France, I realized how similar we were between Singapore and France and as people. 
Uh, you know, mm-hmm. so I decided to do shows um, to help bridge you know, through songs, through jokes, through comedy and, and, and stuff like that. And, and my experiences in France, you know, stepping on dog poo and all that stuff, <laughs> which is true. And then, um, and then one day in 2012, I just knock on this door and this guy gives me an envelope and I'm like, oh, another French exhibition I have to attend. Then <laughs> it says, the French government has given you your, your knighthood. You are now a chevalier de l'ordre des arts et des lettres. Oh, <laughs> God damn. And I was, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, you want to speak French, just make the face like a horse. Like Clemenceau. Oh. <laughs> Let's show what one. So this is about the hack, ah, the French yeah. hack. So, so you say, uncle, they will go, hi, 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 Clemenceau, Clemenceau. No, Clemenceau. Yeah. Yeah. Then the Guillemar. Uh, Guillemar is not French, I don't think. No, it's not. Oh, it's, uh, it's Clemenceau is French. French uh. Clemenceau, yeah, he's a, he was a, the first, he was a general, or no, he's a president that came to Singapore. Mm. Clemenceau. Oh, that's it. Uh, Clemenceau yeah. Avenue. Yeah. He was part of the, uh, yeah, yeah. the treaties. The treaty, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, you're mm. so well educated about Singapore. Well, the history, my history, the world history. So there you go, that was how, I fell in love with the language and, and okay. how um, it has helped me actually in my career, as well as you know building relations between the two countries. So mm. you could see that I could actually become mm. an ambassador, but they won't give me ambassadorship. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay. <laughs> 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 so actually, I wanted a chateau, they didn't give me a chateau. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even fascinated with immigration in Shadow Airport. What wow, oh, oh, sorry, I'm sorry. What do you I'm do sorry. with this, huh? this, uh, this title? Nothing, uh, my name card very big. Uh. <laughs> No <laughs> lah, it's just an honor. I mean, it's just, you know, you can't like, Are you an honorary citizen? No lah, no, 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 no. You studied electronics, you wanted to be a teacher, and then after you got into the arts. And this, uh, sorry, and this interest actually developed when you were in NS. Well, actually, I always loved performing as a child anyway. Oh, in church? Um, in church, in parties, because, I, and I think you, know, you you told me before that like you read about my dad and mm. my dad has always been quite a comedian himself. So whenever we have birthday parties, Christmas parties, gathering auntie's house, mm. he will always be the one going, ah, come, let's sing song, let's play games. Mm. Then, 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 you know, he's always the favorite uncle. Uncle mm. Vincent will always wrestle with the children and play games and football. And right. so I think I got that from him, that a bit of that, clown, comedian, mm. tell jokes, be funny. Yeah. Um, and then, so I, I really had this interest. And mm. because I also was classically trained as a pianist, every time you go to people's house with me, uh, Hosanna, can you play piano for Auntie Rosalind? Come play piano, <laughs> piano, 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 piano. And I'm like, I want to play outside with my yeah. cousins. No, play piano! <laughs> that I cannot play. So, so it was always in like me. Your parents, yeah. uh. also, Auntie parents Rosalind is outside playing. Auntie, Auntie Rosalind. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> in national service, I was a store man and um, the medical officer in my, of my camp um, was is the husband of Karen Tan, the, the actress. Every time during army time, I would just jump on stage and go, I'm going to host uh, Commander Evening's Night or whatever, wow. you know? So they always make me host it. And then he goes, hey, I think you you like to sing, right? I said, yeah, yeah. I said, you should meet my wife, Karen. And so I met Karen and Karen introduced me to uh, Harish and Shama of Necessary, uh, Harish and Alvin of Necessary Stage. Mm. And they said, I think um, you have some talent. You should do theater. Mm. It was 1993. And I said, uh, sure, let's do it, you know? And after I graduated, I, I, I already, 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 um, mm-hmm. they, they gave me a, yeah, how old I am, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you give it away. I gave it away. <laughs> um, I, my first job was Off Center. I don't know if you've heard the play. It's, it's actually an O-level text now. Off Center is about um, mental health. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> the face, the face of mental health. Yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I'm supposed to point you at that. <laughs> no, but I remember reading that yeah. like you were hired as a, because of your training, you actually were hired as a technician. Is that right? Yeah, yeah. Because after I graduated from FSI or French Singapore Institute, it was, I was on bursary. Ma. Mm. EDB was paying us to study. Right. So we were bonded for three years. But can you imagine me in a lab working as a technician? I will blow it up, you know? <laughs> so Necessary Stage or TNS um, said, we will buy your bond, take you over as our technician. Wow. So I, I was working with TNS as a theater technician. Mm. So I can put, you know, RCA cable, or don't, I know scat, I know fader, <laughs> I know all, okay, I can plug in, press play. So, um, <laughs> nice. yeah, so I was very useful to them. You know, I could act and then do all the backstage stuff as well. Wow, you're really? the whole show, eh? Mm. Really for money, yeah. I, uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it was great. I mean, back in the day, it was so fun for us because we had to learn on the job. I never went to drama school. Mm. I never went to, you know, 
it's 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 something that I think what I feel is lacking nowadays is people kids well kids but the younger generation just go out there and just do everything mm. do go and do. don't do you don't try you never know right mm. don't mm. like it then don't do lah but at least you try were yeah. you always this confident man am I confident yeah I mean I think for me it was because I love it when people are laughing they can laugh at me I don't care <laughs> or, <laughs> you know what I mean it's just seeing smiles on people's faces really brings me joy mm. um, and it's just it, yeah, how do I explain it? Uh? Confidence is one thing, it's different though, because I, I I literally get shit scared before I go on stage every time, even if it's a D&D, even if it's just going and doing a normal corporate gig. Mm. I, I'm i scared. Still I, today? Yeah, okay. till today. Wow. Or your own show, you you go on stage, the first time I did my show, I really panic. I didn't know what to say, the curtain be up. Oh, sorry, oh. sorry. <laughs> I'm excited, excited. excited. Yeah. <laughs> So curtain like that, right? I'm standing behind and I forgot what I was going to say when the curtains <sighs> open, right? So I look at my stage manager off stage. I went, what do I say? Mm. And she said, good evening. I said, oh yeah. Mm. Oh my God. Like, good evening. And once, once it happens, once the magic happens and once you are there and the audience goes, yay! You know, you, mm. you are with them and you, they're with you. And mm. that's where the confidence comes in. Right. But prior to that, trust me, I, I need to shit, need to pee, need to throw up all at the same time. Oh, interesting. Yeah. So, so it never end. La. Yeah. No. <laughs> it's nice to know I have my whole life to look forward to this still. No, no, no. It's, it's, it doesn't it, get better lah, is what you're saying. It, no, it, it gets better. <laughs> it gets better because then you you don't drink so much and you don't pee lah. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> just you know, really, that's literally, literally what I do now eh. Like, yeah. as opposed to getting braver, mm -hmm. right? I just stop drinking water. <laughs> yeah. Modern really. problems require yeah. modern yeah. solutions. Yeah. But I think I think for you, if you want to, I mean, if anyone who wants to do any public speaking or hosting or anything, I think it's, I mean, you prep, right? You 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 mm. have the stuff in your head. I think it's it's about being yourself. I think it's more yeah. important. Just going out there and saying, you know what, guys, I'm hired for this job. I'm here to entertain you. I'm here to host it. I'm here to facilitate. This is me. And then enjoy yourself. Mm. You have to enjoy. If you don't enjoy it, then I say don't do. Right. Mm. Mm. Don't do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. As someone who's like done shows that are your show and people pay tickets to go to, and then done like things like D and D or networking events, mm. like how, how what's the difference? Like how does it oh, feel? Wow! I tell you, when I first started, of course the D and Ds and the corporate gigs pay. Mm. You know, because theatre doesn't really pay, but that's my passion. But um, you know, it comes to the point. It came to a point when, and that's quite early on in my career where. No one was listening to my jokes. And then everyone was, yeah, I'm saying, yes. ha ha, what? And you're telling jokes and you're going like, okay, no. And then, and then after that, clients may come and tell you, you weren't funny. But I said, this is the same jokes that sold out my shows before. Mm, yeah. So it was very destroying, but I was also very young and immature then. My tone changed. Started getting very angry when I told my jokes. Oh. You know, you shout yeah, yeah. or you blah, blah, blah. And then I had a friend, and that's why, that's why it's good to have really good friends who tell you to your face and say, Ooh, What's wrong with you? I was like, huh? So why you sound so angry on stage? I said, I mean, really? Mm. He says, yeah. Do you realize that that you you are not funny? I said, but no one's laughing. What? I said, that's because you sound like what you sound. And he said, if you're not happy anymore and you don't want to do this anymore, stop because it will destroy you. Mm. So that was a epiphany. It was like, pow, like that. No mind blown. So now when I go on stage, as long as one person is looking at me and smiling. I will perform to that person. Mm. I will do the best of my ability because that's my job yeah. mm. to make people laugh. So the public speaking mm. tip is right. Pick one person in the audience and yeah. just talk to that person. I, yeah, and most of the time, I think you don't let the the the, the noise distract you because there will be noise. It's the company D and D. You know, mm. you you are, you are you are paid to entertain. You just mm. entertain mm. lah. Mm. You know, mm. <laughs> <laughs> I know it's not easy. Yeah. So it always baffles me, right? That comedians can remember their whole one hour set. Yeah. yeah. Of course not. Then how? I mean, is there, is there no screen on the floor? <laughs> mm. Well, like, okay. <laughs> Nowadays, God, because last time we it's don't like have- 400 jokes eh. Hey, last time we don't have, last time we got screen one. Last time, right, we used a cue card. Then, uh. then like, then we go one word. Oh, one have word. la. Okay, okay, but okay. It's just keyword I, la, do you remember? Keywords, but hardly use them la, because, because it's very distracting because then I lose the connection immediately with the audience. Mm. And I, I just went to see, um, and I, he's, he's one of my idols, like Jerry Seinfeld. Mm. Right. Ooh. Oh, how was it? Uh? It was good, it was good. But, but even he had monitor. Mm. Ah. So it's sometimes, and on the big screen, you can see, ma, he will talk, 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 he will let it. Mm. 
<laughs> yeah, look up. It's nothing wrong with it. It's just that for me as a performer, I mean, because I came from a theater background, theater where got cue cut for you. Yeah, you got three hours of lines. Right? Actually, right? You have to memorize lah. Mm. And, 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 and I have I have fumbled before. I have forgot. I've lost my train of thought before. Mm. But you you know, the more season you get, the more ability yeah. to come back around to where you left off lah. That's why the smoking come in handy. Ah, yeah. The smoking yeah. is very good. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on who and what you smoke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was at I was at Ronnie Cheng's show and it was very refreshing ah, because mm. he completely he completely forgot. Every, his show was like broken into five hundred pieces because because he, because he was trying out he new couldn't material. Couldn't link trying out new material. I think is one thing. Mm. He keeps going back to his notebook and mm. then he kept fumbling and then he's like, "Sorry, this is not a Netflix special, so there are there are mm. no crossovers." Like yeah, the one story does not lead to the other. Yeah, yeah. Oh. so he just go. Then he will read out the first three lines of his joke. Eh. Then he was like, okay, then he cover. What? Then you re-say the first three oh. line on the joke again. <laughs> no, it was so unprofessional, but it was so hilarious yeah. in itself. You no, know? actually, you know what? Having, having said that, kudos to Ronnie Cheng, man. He, yeah. he really has, and to all our comedians, to, to all the comedians who have gone to festivals, mm -hmm. the Melbourne festival, I don't dare to go and do festivals. Why I really not? don't. Because like I said, you, I'm not a real stand-up comedian. This, this what, what makes you a, not a real um, stand-up comedian? Because first of all, I can't put my thoughts into, <laughs> um, uh, uh, how do I say? What's that word? See, I can't even think about it now. Coherent. Ah, coherent. Okay. See? <laughs> because, <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, thanks. What do you Damn want it. for me? <laughs> because I, I, I think very tangentially, you see. So, yeah. so, so I have thoughts coming into my head at 100 miles per hour all the time. So that's why I have Ben, Ben Mr. Miyagi. Mm. I grew up with me in school. He knows me so well that we sit down together and I, and Hosanna 50 in 2019, now you know how old I am. Okay. Hosanna 50 in 2019. <laughs> 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 oh shit. <laughs> okay la, young one. Uh, yeah. CPF la. No, have you in Singapore later already Not yet. <laughs> no can already. 55, oh, yeah. you hit the minimum. So we, we sit down together and I'll go, okay, this is what happened to me. And all life stories. So it's like, I'll tell him all the, then he'll record, record her. Then he'll put it into a proper flow low for me oh, so wow. that I so that when I tell them tell the jokes there is a story because mm. otherwise okay, okay. I can go talk halfway then I'll talk about the sun the moon then talk about starfish or something like that you right. know yeah I think quite funny also yeah. <laughs> no lah <laughs> <laughs> for your funny yeah, but don't forget a lot of my fans are aunties and uncles right. <laughs> they go, hey, say what ah? don't understand then starfish. most of the time they go Jose can you please slow down I we cannot oh. catch what you're saying <laughs> right. I'll be like okay I'll stop such a real comedian you <laughs> <laughs> so like officially Thanks. Ben is writing partner? Yeah, I would call it collaborator. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, right. yeah. Yeah, yeah. So fun. I had to beg my parents to let me go and work for the necessary stage because they said, what do you mean? What are you working for a theater company? What do you, what do you, what do you mean? You're supposed to be a technician. So I said, no, they bought over my bond. I'm, I'm going to be a technician. But I will still, <laughs> you know, I want to act. And my mom goes, like, what kind of life is that? You know, yeah. acting, you know, the usual lah. Mm. Say, so it's all sex, drugs, and rock and roll. Yeah. I mean, okay, it's Sounds true. Sounds true. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, tell. I got stories, but after this. Okay, anyway. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> those were the days. But, um, it, but the money you earn is very, very little back then. 1993, my first paycheck was $120, Ooh. you know, as an actor. And because, technician. Yeah, oh. yeah. It was hard. It was hard work. And and I, but I told my parents that you don't give me pocket money. I will show you I can, I can, I can survive on my own. Mm. Okay. And that was how it all started. And I wanted to be a real actor, a real actor, a serious actor. So- <laughs> 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 Not thinking so yeah, seriously. Yeah, yeah. So Necessary Stage, you know, if you know that it's a wonderful company, they deal with a lot of social issues. Mm. They talk about poverty in Singapore, right. you know, the, 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 the underprivileged, whatever lah. So it was very, very serious things that I was acting. And then um, Haresh, bless him, he said, you're actually quite funny huh, as a person. I said, yeah. Okay, I write you a play. So he wrote me a play with, oh. with other people. And then um, it, you know, it was partly comedy, partly tragedy, but you know how, how comedians are actually quite tragic, mm. you know? Um, and the, the, the producers from Under One Roof came to watch that show and saw me and said, hey, you, Come on, come and do Under One Roof. Ah. So mm -hmm. that was my first foray into television, mm. which I had never done before. So it was my first step into a different media. Yeah. And then from there- You paid better? It, mm, <laughs> 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 Why do you think I work so hard? 
<laughs> and then started hosting stuff. Then corporate shows came along, and then radio was 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 something yeah. I never thought I would do. And then, mm. you know, twelve years of doing breakfast radio every morning, wake up four yeah. o'clock, going Good morning Singapore. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what y'all never see behind uh, now? Now I'm putting oh, then got to do Facebook Live on. Mm. Yeah. 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 Unfair. The poor girl, now they so need to wear makeup at 5 exactly. a.m. Exactly. So last <laughs> time, like, in fact, I'm trying to draw the eyebrow. Like, yeah. <laughs> but last time it was really, it was fun for us because it, we had, you know, Maggie and I had the, like, I think we were the best duo on, on radio on uh, the Go yeah. Breakfast show. It was yeah. fun, yeah. And then movies and then, you know, things like that. Lah. So a lot of different mediums. In fact, I've practically tried every different. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I was just thinking what I else. My like. finger in every pie. Yeah. Like. <laughs> so why do you talk like that? <laughs> Why? What could I want, right? Yeah. Most of these like career pivots, right? They were, they, you stumbled upon them or were there any that you actively seeking out? Mm, that's an interesting question because um, I never actively sought what I wanted to do. So radio was like, I bumped into Maggie on the streets one day. And she said, hey, I need a co-host like, in the morning. Huh? And I'm like, <laughs> uh, okay. You know, and then like- <laughs> You see, you can't wait for you or something. Yeah, no, exactly. So I, huh. I, I never actively asked anyone. Of course, there are auditions, mm. you know? Ah. I mean, and when you're younger, you go, I want to be on Broadway. I want to be on West yeah. End, you know? And then I tried, I went to audition for Miss Saigon. I went to audition for The King and I. Mm. And then back in the day, of course, I mean, you know, the early 2000s or late 90s, this kind of phase, then the first thing they ask you is, you got visa or not? Uh, uh, right, right. I don't have visa, ma. I don't have ma. So that, a lot of that dashed kind of my hopes. But then I thought, why don't I just stay in Singapore and make Singapore work? Why do I have to look towards the West yeah. to, to prove anything to anyone? Because look mm. at our productions. I think we are as good or if not better than some of the productions I've seen on Broadway, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, okay. So yeah, I never actively sought to do these kind of things. Mm. Yeah. So then is there a particular gig that you feel like really, I guess, like affected the trajectory of your career? It wasn't a gig. It was actually, what's that word? Uh, not, not, not confident, but insecure because I never had a university degree, mm. right? So I thought after a while acting already, do got a few TV shows under my belt, got theater under my belt. I want to go to university study drama. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I, I yeah, got, um, with an honorary degree. Yeah, I must <laughs> be a real actor, yeah. Yeah. not with TCS, that kind yeah, of thing. Yeah, like. yeah, yeah. Thespian. And then, yeah? A thespian. Yeah, a thespian. A thespian. So <laughs> I was like, hmm. And then I applied for NIDA, which is um, uh, National Institute of Dramatic oh, Arts. I <laughs> Good thing he went Good to thing. expand the acronym. <laughs> <laughs> National <laughs> Institute of Dramatic Arts in Sydney. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Kate Blanchett came from, Mel Whoa. Gibson came from. You know, it, it was a, and, and 20,000 people auditioned every year for 12 spaces. <gasps> oh my goodness. Wow. Okay. So I- Neither of them got <laughs> <laughs> So I said, I will try. So I applied. And, and I, I'm glad I did because it was a very good humbling experience for me coming from Singapore, you know, having been on TV, blah, blah, blah. blah. And then I went there, the first thing they throw you 300 people in one room, boom. Okay, every one of you now do your own monologue, three or 300 people there. Like, you know how long huh? the audition was? My God. Then, then after that, they will say, okay, wait, wait outside for lunch. Then after they say, these are the names for second callback. And for 300, it whittled down to 20. <gasps> okay. So Ooh. I was one of the 20. I was like, wow. wow. So I was like, hey, nah. oh, wow, I it was a humbling experience. Yeah. No, it was very humbling. For the rest of them, for the rest of them, for the rest of them, Yes. <laughs> 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 after lunch, come back really. Then I was like, wow, shit, what do I want? I didn't prepare anything else really. No, it's to see how well you can work with each other. How well oh. we can take direction. So wow, they throw things at us. Then after that, all right. Um, these are the people that can will come back and see the Dean, the head of NIDA, one on one. <laughs> so I, so I got called back for the final audition. <laughs> Which is damn yeah. humbling for the rest yeah. of them. Yeah. <laughs> for example, Leonardo DiCaprio yeah. was sent home. He was sent home. <laughs> In a bus. Yeah. Yeah. Um, no, I, and then um, he, he sat me down and he said- Sorry, how old were you at this point? Uh, I would have been in my late twenties. Okay. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay. yeah, late twenties, almost two, two, before 2000, 2000 something. Anyway, um, he said, I don't want you in the school. Don't, I don't want you. I don't want because you. I I would destroy you. 
That's their words they use. Mm. If you want to be a NIDA graduate, we will destroy you and build you up again. So you become a clone. You right. know what I mean? Schools do that, what? Mm. Okay, right? Okay, okay. Yep. Yeah, yeah. You, you, know, you understand? So, so he says, you look at your body of work. You are already on television. You have done so much and you have talent. Why do you want to come to NIDA? I said, because I want to be an undergraduate. This, <laughs> you know, but we don't want you because, and I have to thank Tony for that, Tony Knight, because he, he actually gave me the chance to come back to Singapore, even though I failed the auditions, humbled me to say that, yes. And it gave me the confidence to say, I think I'm kind of, sorry, I think I'm kind of good enough, um, you know, to do what I do. Um, so I w always want to encourage the younger people nowadays to go to say, if you're scared, if you, you this, it's good to be scared because mm. it gives you that extra push to, mm. to, 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 to excel, mm. you know, in what, you, in what you do. And if you can't, then go and study, la, go and learn. La. So I never went to drama school. So everything I learned on the job. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the takeaway is don't go to school. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't, did I? Oh, neither did oh. I. Neither here nor there. Neither did he go to neither. Uh, neither. I neither. Nah. But I was asking Fuck about your other. age because in the research that I was doing, right, you did share in another interview where after you hit 40, you actually felt that you reached a different level of maturity and you wanted mm. to try new things. So mm. at that point, right, what did new things look like for you? And you know yeah. why? Because you, you, tried everything. you say like by the yeah. time you were 29, you had all these things all in your resume bus. already. And so <laughs> what was it for you that you felt like you had not done in your career and you wanted to explore at that point? Well, actually, I wanted perfect eyesight, but it was very hard at 40. No, but lazy. I think when you hit milestone ages like 40, 50, um, perspectives change. I think the needs change, your desires and wants change as well. And then you realize what you want and what you need is is different. Mm -hmm. And when I was younger, when I was with Mediacorp and all that, you know, every time I got a big job, first thing I would go, go buy branded stuff, buy Gucci sunglasses. Then I thought, you know, <laughs> yeah, you know, then, then to think myself, I mean, when you got, you got older, it's if war how? Famine how, huh? <laughs> huh? Can boy my Gucci sunglasses make soup, man? <laughs> right? So, so extreme. Yeah, it's very extreme, man. My thought. That's why so I said very tangential. You started buying <laughs> canned food. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. Like yeah. My That's shit. drama. This is my pantry. <laughs> <laughs> Sa sardines. <laughs> no, no, so it, then I thought to myself, yeah, I, I saw I started um, 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 twin, uh, double confirm productions, mm. which was basically to give work if possible to people who are crew, who are actors, uh, leg up, because I was given so much opportunity by people yeah. being kind. I mean, they say, yeah, but you, 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 you fit the role or whatever. But what about people who never had the chance to try? Mm. So that's why I started the, the company so that I could give people a leg up in the industry as well, because it's a very hard industry to be in, mm. right? Who in the right mind would say, I want to be an actor. And then I started training, started to teach, started to, so I basically fulfilled my ambitions law. I became a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, I give talks. Um, I played a lawyer. <laughs> 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 I've, I, 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 I've written um, articles as a journalist, oh. you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then I'm an actor, so I'm quite, I'm quite contented with my what, what I am and who I am today. Mm. Um, and I think it's all- You should be like at this point, really. I if mean, you are really, not, then we no, are Yeah, I know, but there are people <laughs> who are not yeah, and, yeah. and constantly searching and, const and, and don't blame them because Singapore is such a, a country where, you, I, for want of a better word, it's built on greed, isn't it? Mm. I want, I want, I want, I want, I want. Everybody's I want, but do you need? what you want, <laughs> yeah, yeah. you see? So yeah. I thought as I got older, this kind of settled um, in my head. And uh, yes, of course, I still want things. I still want a nice life. I still want to travel in SIA suites. Sponsor, um, <laughs> which I never did. <laughs> <laughs> so I never will, I've tried. <laughs> Pay la, of course, can. Yeah. 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 But I think daily catch up, I think we should all go on a trip together. Oh, we should. Yeah. 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 One A, one B, two A, yeah. two A. <laughs> New York, London, that's it. Ah, like, London, no, go further lah. Ah, yeah, New, yeah, yeah, New York. New York, New York. You're going to see Broadway, you're going to study a bit. Yeah, yeah, we need your research yeah, trip. Yeah, yeah. Huh? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Learning journey. Yeah. <laughs> to answer your question, yes, um, it's been really, really exciting. And where I am right now, 
it's not the end of mm. like, oh, he can retire at 55 now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> there's so many things to explore. Which yeah. is why you moved to Malaysia. What, Malaysia? <laughs> well, yes. I mean, it could have been any country actually, if you think mm-hmm. about it. If yeah. the opportunity arises, if someone had offered me a job in Sydney, for example, or or wherever, I, I, yeah. I would go because it's a chance for me to explore and grow as yeah. a human a being, as, as a person. And Johor was interesting because in 2013, I started getting work there. Mm. People started inviting me over to, to tell jokes, stand up comedy. Uh, so in 2013, my first, it was Malaysia versus Singapore comedy scene. Yeah. So I had to tell jokes versus <laughs> Jason Leong. Oh. Douglas Lim. Douglas Lim, yeah. Red tough, red tough. Yeah. And, 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 uh, and because they were known as MACC back then, they were a Chinese, they were a Malaysian Association of Chinese Comedians. Uh, Okay. Huh? So it was four of them versus me <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So they disputed how much you charge? <laughs> they the Singapore budget. <laughs> no, it was arts festival. So uh, I was like, it, it was nothing lah, basically. <laughs> <laughs> Festival, yeah, yeah, yeah. no money. Yeah, 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 yeah. So they they were ten minutes, ten minutes, ten minutes. I did forty five minutes. Oh, oh my god! Uh, but it was fun. So it was my first foray. It's into, very humbling for the rest of them. Hey, don't let me sound like some arrogant prick. He got the intuition that come back still him. No, no, but it was a good opportunity because I've never worked with other comedians before. Back then, don't have one. Back then, or Rishi or haven't started yet. Fast or haven't started yet. So then um, um, that was my first time. And after that, I, I kept getting invited back to Johor to do this. So, I said, mm. then, so then my, my, my partner and I thought, why don't we start a company there? And because Johor is so near Singapore, it's also a great springboard to KL. Mm. You know, it's only $20 to KL, to fly to KL from Johor. Oh, ah, 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 hashtag hack. Ah, hashtag ah, hashtag. Air, air travel hack. Yeah, no, because you prefer, <laughs> you fly bat- Batik Air. <laughs> Oh, I never hear before. Triangle, SIA, and Batik. Batik Air is a budget, but it's a 737. It flies you straight to KLA, one way, $20. Right. Oh, wow. it's from, a from, from, from Just Sen- like parking here in a day. In exactly. <laughs> from from Sennai <laughs> Airport. Singapore is still where my home is. Mm. And this is where I work. But to in order to establish your business in another country, you have to be on the ground. Ma. Yeah. You mm. cannot say, oh, I can't come for a meeting. You know, because I'm in Singapore or whatever. Mm. But... Whereas on the other way, on the other, on the other hand, if someone in Singapore says, I need to see you at 10 o'clock in the morning, I will tell them, I will be there. Yeah. Mm. I cannot say, oh, sorry, I'm in JB. No, mm. cannot. My clients, my rehearsals. So you have to be disciplined in the sense that if you tell me to come here at 2, I will be here at 1.30 because that's my job. Mm. It's true. To turn really? up. Mm. Yeah. So now that you've mm. worked in both Singapore and Malaysia, right? How do you think the entertainment scene compares? Oh, I mean, it's very different. Malaysia is very, uh, I would say, language-based in a sense, because if there's Malay language, of course, Bahasa, and then there's the Chinese language. Uh, English language, not so right. much. Um, KL has more. Um, um, but Singapore, because I think we're smaller as well, and we're more in the sense, the, the, the National Arts Council kind of, we still have our different language based or uh, festival based mm. shows. Um, but for me in Malaysia, um, entertainment for me is still a struggle to, 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 to establish myself because first of all, I don't speak Bahasa well enough to go onto Malaysian stuff, uh, Malay stuff. And Chinese, of course. <laughs> so, so I joined the French. French. <laughs> the French. <laughs> so I joined the French Chamber of Commerce in oh, KL. Wow. Oh. So I just joined only. So based on what they let you in. Can no no. <laughs> <laughs> if you join any chamber of commerce, you have to pay a subscription okay, okay, yeah. fee. Yeah. Oh. Okay, 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 okay. Right. But how I got into that was very, also very interesting because <laughs> there's, you know, you know, there's a French restaurant called Les Bouchons in Singapore. Yeah. Uh, they sell steak and all mm-hmm. that. Mm-hmm. So Les Bouchons opened in KL. Okay. And the, the, the chef knows me. So the chef said, hey, do you mind coming to KL and opening Le Bouchon for us? I said, sure, okay, I'll, I'll go anytime. So I went there <laughs> and then, yeah, KL then fun. <laughs> um, um, the, 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 the ambassador was there, French people were there. Then they, they looked at me and they was like, who are you? Where you come from? Where you speak French? Right, Why are your face like right. that? <laughs> no, I mean, because you know, like Chinese face, then yeah. like speak French, singing in French all. If yes. we were threatened by you. <laughs> no, no, they, 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 they never had this kind of entertainment. Yeah. Um, because, you know, I, I don't know, 
maybe, of course, I'm sure there are Malaysians in KL who also can speak French, but they, they're not an entertainer like I am. Mm. So I, I thought, hey, I should get into this, you know, this market. Yeah. yeah. To be right? Because yeah. I will corner it already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, good thinking. Right. Good thinking. Right. Yeah. <laughs> so Shoot. must have been entrepreneur a bit. Correct. Correct. <laughs> Don't just be, I'm, just like, I'm, just a, I'm just a bimbo actor. <laughs> 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 no way, Jose. Yeah. 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 What happens in JB for your business? Is there something that I can go and, and attend and enjoy? Um, enjoy? <laughs> like, like, do, do you have like oh, a, I see. Yeah. Um, no, so we do a lot of corporate training. So we do media oh, skills. I see, I see, I see. How, like for example, if like this is a panel and you are the CEO of somebody and then I'm trying to hantam you because your company got something wrong. Right. What are you going to say? The art of smoking, oh, essentially. <laughs> wow, it really goes so it's circle. true. So it, it is. It is. If you're gonna go on Bloomberg and CNBC, and then we're gonna hunt them you, and then the CEO goes, uh, 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 then fail already, right? Your, right. your mm. shares will be out. <laughs> so we teach, we train, we give the skills for people to be more um, Media confident, right. yeah, and present presentation. So Malaysia had a, we had a little problem because a lot of people say, oh, but uh, tapi saya tak boleh cakap my English or mm. you know, we speak Hawaii. I said, yeah, but. We are not telling you how to speak in your language, but giving you the skills. So whichever language you speak, mm -hmm. you're able to deliver. What, what is an message. example of a skill? If you've got a lot, a big message, right, to tell the press, to, you got something to deliver. Can you can you uh, uh, summarize that into one sentence? Okay, if you can, very good. Because all this immediate ones, thirty seconds only, what? Yeah. Right. Better yet, one word. What's your message in one word? Like that lah. So of course, this is not just, this is now like five minutes, but this is a cost. <laughs> yeah. You gotta pay, you gotta pay, yeah. 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 understand. Yeah. I give you that. <laughs> 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 I give you, this is just a taster, but it's true. So uh, it, it's interesting. It's interesting yeah, yeah, work yeah. for us. And, and, for, and, and, and then on a level, which is not media, is presentation skills. Mm. How to use your voice, how to be interesting in front of an audience, how to, because you have to talk to your board of directors, talk to your investors, how do you do that? So that's how, what we do like in, in Malaysia as well. Do they end up being funny? Sometimes, because it's very important to be hu to add humor into your presentation. Right, right. You catch the audience immediately. Mm. So you don't go, today my PowerPoint is this. Then you start reading PowerPoint. Wow, well, I can read, hello, okay, you don't mind. Mm. You know, so we, <laughs> we always say, what is, what is the first thing that's, that will interest people? Tell them a funny thing that happened to you this morning. Yeah. You know, mm. on the way and then and then lead into your story and then lead into your presentation. Mm. <laughs> then they go, oh. All yeah. oh, the CEOs. No, but it's true though. The, yeah. the, the, the lack of confidence is very, it's very apparent. Yeah. But I think it's so interesting that, I mean, you are ex essentially expanding your business. How much? How much you try to no, sorry, sorry, You want to come, you can't charge you a ringgit. Okay. Oh! oh. <laughs> oh. So! Yeah, yeah. Mates rates, come yeah. over to JB. Then you go and makan some more. Then you fly to KL. JB so. yeah. 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 So I think it's quite interesting because I mean, you kind of retired from stand-up after your 50th, uh, that anniversary show, right? But now you're expanding so much. So something that happened to you right before your 50th birthday was that you had a huge health scare. Oh, mm. so it's not really retiring from stand-up, it's retiring from producing my own stand-up show because when I did Hosanna 50. <laughs> You're affecting his cash flow. Uh, sorry, 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 sorry. Yeah. No, no, no. It, it, it's, it's, it's fine. It's because I can ask for sponsors now. <laughs> <laughs> because I, we, we came, because it was a gratitude show to, and the gratitude was because of that health scare in 2018, right. where I almost died because yeah. of, of a bacterial infection that- The, the doctor don't yeah, know what it is. Yeah, it was very scary because, okay, in 2018, I was filming for an HBO special in, 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 in Indonesia. And it was a period piece where I got wow, drama la, fight la, I do kung fu, or then roll in the mud la, everything. Ah. Ah. Mm -hmm. I said the fight clip. Drama. Ah. <laughs> Very drama. Then in three months later, I started getting high fevers. I couldn't know what, I thought it was a flu, Panadol. So finally one day, someone, a friend of mine who's a nurse, saw me and she said, why is your face yellow and green? I said, what oh. do you mean? She said, something's wrong with your liver. I said, huh? I said, yeah, you are going to emergency now. I'm going to call the infectious doctors to go see you. So I went straight to Mount E and then it was Dr. Leong, the-, the, the, the Your father? No, your <laughs> brother. The, the COVID one, Dr. Leong Ho Nam. He was always on TV, Dr. Oh. Leong. Okay, okay. He oh. saw me, he said, 
you, you, you're you warded now because something's really wrong with you. Your, your, your infection rate is thousand, don't know what. Right. And they couldn't find the bacteria was infecting me. And he asked me, he said, after about nine, eight days, I was very, very frustrated. I was, I was like very weak. And he says, um, by the way, did you, have you been rolling around in mud? <laughs> very random question, right? Yeah. I said, as a matter of fact, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Three months ago, oh, you won't believe this. Yeah, I was. Then he went, oh, you've got melio, meliodosis or something like that. So meliodosis wow. is, 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 is a bacteria from the from sand and soil and water in tropical areas. Mm. So farmers get it. NS people get it. Spartan race people get it. Right. Yeah. Um, but it's, it's so hard to detect and it attacks your organs and pus forms around it and you get organ failure. Oh, so oh you can gosh. die. Yeah, so he had like a failing liver, pneumonia. Yeah, everything was attacking everything, but it was just before the pus was formed that they caught it. Wow. They immediately pumped me with antibiotics. And then I had to hold, I, I was, there was a pick line and antibiotics was in, intravenously, you know, pumped at me for six months. Oh <gasps> my Yeah, so God. it's much, for example, I had the belt uh, here and I had to answer every day, go and change the antibiotic bottle. Oh, yeah, oh so because they, they said this bacteria what? is so strong, it can hide in your system and come back again. Right. So if you don't kill it, it will kill you. The mortality rate is uh, over 100,000 cases in Asia every year and 88,000 people die from it. 88%. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because they-, they Mortality rate. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's why I would never join a Spartan race. Eh? Yeah. Actually, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Actually, there, if you go NS, you don't become club. <laughs> <laughs> and don't be a farmer. Yeah. <laughs> but it's true because that's what happens. Anyway, so I survived that, thank God. So I thank thought God. that was why 2019, was my gratitude year. I wanted to do Hosanna 50. Mm -hmm. So I put in all my all my funds and everything. But you know, being a producer is scary because you don't know how many tickets you can sell. Mm. And every morning, my producer and I will be on going, Sistic, how many we saw yesterday? <laughs> how many saw? Mm. It's them, it, anyway, we, we didn't know when we were gonna break even or even make money because we might lose everything. But thank goodness, because we sold it, we sold it, we, 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 we did well. Lah. And that's why after that I said, go la la. Yeah. <laughs> I think that's too much yeah. stress yeah. for me. But you know, if any banks out there would like to go, <laughs> to just, you know, yeah, I yeah, could yeah. always go DBS presents, Hosanna yeah. something. I feel like right now mm. we, we see a resurgence, or not a resurgence, like we see a spike, right? Mm. In in very big place theater coming to Singapore. And, Mm. I've been privileged to, mm. to go to a few of them. Mm. Local theater, like how do we, is there a, for example, a $20 theater ticket that somewhere mm. out there in Arab street, there is a play <laughs> that- God, mm. have the a lot. Where, so, uh? yeah. No, you see, because big shows come and they have big budgets, mm. Hamilton come, Miss Saigon come, theater, Taylor Swift come, all the big shows come, of, you will know. But then if you really want to support local Singaporean theater, be it in English, Mandarin, whatever language you want, we have so much. And even music, even concerts, even art. Even where, where, where can I find catch a $20 dot SG. Play? Catch okay. .sg. Catch .sg. Catch .sg. Okay. If you check out catch.sg, it has a whole listing. And this is, and, 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 and bless them because NAC wanted a, a, a somewhere where some, we all can go. Yeah. Uh, we all can go and just check. And a lot of people don't know about it, but catch.sg has, has reviews, blogs written of shows, of exhibitions, you mm. know, and um, and you can find out prices as well. Right. You okay. know, so it's not just the big shows, you also get uh, a little shows like, you know, that's why I said the LaSalle students are so um, clever nowadays. They come out and they go, oh yeah, we, if we don't have work with big theater companies, what do we do? We form a collective mm. and we do our own shows mm. and we charge $20. Yeah. You're gonna come and watch it. And so there's a lot of initiative going on, which I'm very, very glad for, mm. um, because this, the, the, it is a very crowded space in the, in, in the arts. It? It's a crowded space in, theater, arts. in arts. Yes. Right, right, right. Uh, book, if you want me to perform next year, I don't know when I got space or not. Oh. I, have to, I have to book theater two years in advance. Eh? Oh. Right. Mm. Supply issue. La. Bad as well, uh, also over oversupply of a lot of shows coming to Singapore. Right. Mm. And and rental, and one night rental estimate 12,000 liao. Right. Uh, wow. Yeah, okay. if you don't sell out then how? <laughs> right. 
I think this affordable tickets to the arts, I think that that's going to be a big milestone. I, I feel like I just want to shout out Jackie and friends as well. Mm. He he do this $5 comedy nights. Oh, mm. Jackie, yeah. I just, yeah, oh, Jackie, like yeah. Five yeah. bucks or like 15 bucks or something like that. Absolutely. Yeah, very affordable. And and I think there are, there are affordable shows out there. It's just that whether people really want or not or interested, but that's why I have this theory, right? Or, you know, I'm close the shopping centers at 7 p.m. So everyone can go and do things like theater, go home oh. and have family, yeah. spend time with your family. You know, so you go to the mall at nine o'clock, sit around the fountain for what? Yeah, yeah. just like after yeah. that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Got a lot of people doing that. Yeah, why? Yeah. No, exactly. I think about that a lot. So. <laughs> but you know, there are two more things. People say, oh, yeah, 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 more very boring. I only got shopping center. Yeah, because you'll never you bother going, yeah. to go and see whether you've got other things to do or not. You know, mm. festivals and stuff like that. So many things are happening. So mm. I disagree with a lot of people that say that Singapore is boring. Um, you know, have you all been to the recent bird park paradise? Yeah. Oh it's, yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. And I, I I went recently, I was like, wow. Uh, you know, go, you know, things like that. Like, and there's and you know, there's uh, I, I discovered the Orang Laut in Singapore, mm. Mm. you know, that, and that? around like, the, the people of the people. sea. So the original- Our Indigenous people. Yeah. The indigenous the OGs. islanders. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The old elves. Yeah. <laughs> um, so they're called the Orang Pulau, because they used to live in all the Pulau's in Singapore, Pulau islands. Selakau, islands. the yeah. islands, you know? And Wait, so where did I find them? Oranglaut.sg. Oh. Ah, yeah, you it's got not, it's not they've digitalized. Anymore. What they're trying to do right now is they're trying to push their, their heritage via food. Because their food is very is different from, mm, right. from mainland food. Okay. So mm. what he does is Fadawas's mother will cook a, a menu for you and you can order and it delivers to your house. Ooh. Mm. Right. Interesting, right? So, yeah. yeah. so this yeah. is a great medium for 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 letting the people know what's going on in Singapore and around the world, right? Yeah. Mm. So, if there was one thing that you could just like like that, like snap your fingers and it changes and it what what would that be for this industry? <laughs> that we need more budget. <laughs> <laughs> no, but because as, as as a producer myself and as, as a director, there's so many amazing shows that I want to do, um, that I want to produce, that I want to direct. Um, the, have you seen the producers, the musical? The one is oh, damn funny. It's, 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 it's on on it's Netflix. Called the producers. It's called the producers. Oh. Um, and uh, it's it's a Matthew Broderick, Nathan Lane. Uh, Uma Thurman and all that. It's very good. Anyway, that's a musical. Then I want to do a play. I want to direct The Crucible, for example. Wow. You know, things like that. You know, yeah. it's it's wow. just- How much money you need to make that happen? Frankly, a, a, a big a big budget musical, you need about a million. Okay, about and how much money you think you can make in that two to six months, optimistically? You mean, you, you mean run the show for two to six months? Yeah. Cannot make money. Okay. Cannot make money because in Singapore, there's only so many million people. people. Mm. And yeah. out of the million people, only so many hundred thousand will come and watch your show. Yeah. And if you run for six, three, six months, no one's gonna come after the first month. That's why our shows only run for three weeks. Right. Mm. That's the optimal. Kind like, of, so okay. that you can break even and make money. Because right. mm. don't forget, every time you carry on, you still pay for rent. Huh? Yeah. You still pay for, even the empty theatre, you still right. pay rent. Huh? Mm. Monday night, you close because dark night, you still pay rent for the Monday night. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Right. Yeah, so it, it, it all adds up and it, it accumulates, you see. Mm. So it's it's not easy, but you can do it on a budget if you're clever. But then again, what kind of show you want to do? La? I'm curious, right? Because like you mentioned earlier, you had grown up in church and your family was quite a staunch Christian family as well, right? And now on social media and all that, you're quite supportive of Pink Dot and the most recent, the Proud movement also. Proud Spaces. Mm, Proud Spaces. And I wonder if there was any ever any conflict between trying to reconcile the two? I'm a Christian and and um, I, I mean, I believe that what, what my faith between, is between me and God, mm. right? But there are communities out there who need support, who need um, allyship. Mm. So mm. Proud Spaces is, I think, um, Singapore's first pride center in a sense where it's just started this year. And over the course of these few months, it has, um, because for example, trans kids have nowhere to go because they get bullied in school. They don't want to go to school. They, they, mm. and, and this center gives them tuition. Right. You come, you know, you're in a safe space. Um, for example, there's some religions, they kick you out of the house. And then during festivals, they have nowhere to go for a reunion, mm. to come together. This space offers them, come, makan together. And, wow. and, and we have a community and it's free. So we have support for other communities in Singapore 
why not for the LGBTQ plus communities? Because everyone's human, everyone deserves a chance to be recognized as an individual, no matter what and no matter who you mm. are. Mm. And what does it matter to to the next person, uh, uh, you know, who who the person sleeps with or who the person thinks that yeah mm. doesn't doesn't affect your life, what mm. you know what I mean? But yet, why not no support given? Mm. Yeah, and and then to end on a brighter <laughs> note, <laughs> on a brighter <laughs> note, on a brighter note, is there something that you are looking forward to doing next? So this year, like I said, it's been very quiet, which is good because last year I, I was doing so many things at one time. I had no break for six months and then ended up me having slip this la. Oh my and gosh. I, yeah, it was, it was, yeah. So this year was quiet, it was great, but Dim Sum Dollies is coming back end of the mm. year. Mm. So in December, we're very excited for Dim Sum Dollies. So, you know, it's, it's going to be quite fun as we rewrite history. <laughs> yeah, this is the history of the Dim Sum Dollies according to them after 1965. Oh. So after independence. And so it'd be quite fun to, to, to come and watch. Mm -hmm. Are you um, the, the chopstick? I'm the chopstick, yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not a dolly. Right? <laughs> um, next year, SG60, I, nothing has happened. Oh, I might, I might be doing another French-based um, um, musical called The French Kiss, uh, which I'll be directing. And, just, and just a kiss for them. Yeah, like French Kiss. They must cut tongue, must come on. Yeah. Yeah. I find it so interesting because we've interviewed like several mm. comedians already and all of them have a different approach. Yeah. And I can see like in their head, I, I kind of am trying to picture like what's it going on in their head, right? And for you, I feel like I keep seeing different characters popping in and out. <laughs> then you, you keep like manifesting like different voices and like, you know? Mm. Oh. Yeah, like is that what's going on? Like are you, is there like an uncle, <laughs> uncle version suddenly <laughs> appearing? And then you have multiple- <laughs> <laughs> This is why he's our resident mentor spokesman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, it's so different. But that's why I have to answer. <laughs> Please talk to my lawyer. That's what I mean. I'm, I'm, I think very tangentially and then in different, you know, yeah. how I reply mm, people. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have different personas that, that pop out, like you say. That's mm. why I do a lot of character voices. You know, for the life of me, do you all know that Doraemon was me? <gasps> Wait, what? When you are growing oh, up. La, la, wo, oh, Doraemon was you? Yes. <gasps> On Sunday morning, right? No. Thanks, good this night everyone. Thing, you see, I asked correct question. Right? Yeah. Wait, wait, you mean it's dubbed locally? Yes. That's the oh. one show that I was allowed to watch on weekends. Sunday morning, right? Sunday yeah. Morning, yeah. Can you do a Yeah, bit? can you do <coughs> a line? Wait, 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 who is he? He's Doraemon himself. Hi, I'm Doraemon. <laughs> oh my word. <laughs> Nobita, Nobita, what are you doing? Hey, I'm Doraemon. Oh what if you need to speak a long sentence though? That's so difficult. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for telling me. You're welcome. <laughs> and if you want to flashback, just call me. Uh. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Say hey, something like on voice yeah. Good morning, Denise. It's all right, man. Please have to wake up. That's Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm meeting the Simpson. Eh? <laughs> <laughs> now, aren't you glad you got <laughs> on the show? <laughs> We, like our oh. show goes downhill from here. <laughs> we have picked also. <laughs> so speaking of painting and art. So uh, Mr. Jose Leong is yes. joining us in supporting Shaving Us this year. <laughs> Come and if you free. Okay. On the 19th of October at our Tampanese Hub. Basically okay. this is a event by North East CDC. Mm -hmm. They want to not just give them a platform, um, artists with disabilities in Singapore, not just a platform, but a means to learn more, go deeper, and then be able to uh, make a good living as artists. So selling, selling the paintings. They are selling, correct. Okay, so okay. I've already... Uh, bought mine. If you want, okay. I, you can buy this one. So, okay. Yeah, so this one is by Tan Mei Yen. So, she actually has been diagnosed with cerebral palsy. She likes to use very dynamic lines, right, to mm. kind of show her creativity and talent and bring that out through her painting. And she likes the beautiful expression of movement, you know, and expression through her art. So, this mm. piece of art is called Chromatic Lines. You can check it out on the day of the exhibition. We will be at our Tempanese Hub and we hope to see you there. We want to thank Hosen for joining us today. And thank we are very so humbled by this experience. Yeah. <laughs> we hope to see him in JB for food. Hi, like, share, subscribe, and we'll yeah. see you. Bye-bye. See ya, thank you everyone. <laughs> yeah. oh, Look at what scary. happened this morning in uh, the US. Oh, yeah, what happened? Biden drop out. Huh? <laughs> oh, 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 I haven't yeah. read the news, really. Oh. Oh. Biden drop out. Yeah, at 2 a.m. this morning, he yeah. endorses uh, Kamala Harris, which is the right play. La. Which is the oh for me. <laughs> no, I mean, good lah, because yeah. I, was, I was like, oh my gosh, cannot lah, uncle, and grandfather, please stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. no, I love you. Like, sit down, right? Yeah. Yeah. No, really. yeah. Yeah. You done, yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> so so it's Alamak Harris ah. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Stay no. tuned, stay tuned. I mean, no, yeah. I don't think she watches this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, her name still back was is literally that. Uh-huh. Yeah. I just realized. <laughs> I thought it was just a boat. No, but I'm mean, oh, wow, hang ah. No, because, <laughs> no, I didn't know. Thank you for telling me no that. Problem, no I'm, I'm, yeah. When is this podcast coming out? <laughs> yeah, it's all the week. We saw on Twitter. He said it's November. <laughs> After the election. <laughs> <laughs>